Well, this video I've probably been waiting for for about, I don't know, a little over a year, I'm guessing. <laughs> I was kind of hoped for this video for since last year, but nonetheless, what's up, people of the world? It is me, Alex Wimmer, aka AP3 Jumps, and welcome to a brand new reaction video slash commentary video because we all know reaction videos are all but repetitive, which is why I'm doing commentary in, <laughs> instead of just reacting to something because, yeah, <laughs> you have to strive for originality after all. Yes, today I'm reacting to Nathaniel Bandy's newest NB original for a little game. None, none other than Super Mario 63. Now, this game I have a lot of history and nostalgia with. And I first played this Flash game back in, like, middle school. And was one of the, was, it was, uh... It was one of the first Mario Flash games that I played. Um, the only other one preceding this was uh, Super Mario Flash. And that was the first Mario Flash game that I played to have a level, level editor. Super Mario 63 was the second... And for the longest time, Super Mario 63 winded up being my favorite Mario Flash game of all time. It was just that it was just that great, and it, it kind of sort of it kind of sort of defied my expectations, to be quite honest. And uh, the only game that would top this, oh, as for being my favorite Mario Flash game, would be um, Super Mario Bros. X, which I discovered in 2012, and uh, I discovered. Uh, Super Mario 63 in like 2008, I'd say. So yeah, it's been it's been about 10 years since I first played this game, and um, I used to I, I used to request this for it they only to play this game on on like live streams. Um, I might have been one of the first people to do that. I don't know. I'm <laughs> forgive me for boasting, but yeah. This game was highly, highly requested for Nathaniel Bandy to discuss. He did play it on a live stream at, 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 at one point. And at this was, I don't know if it was late last year or early this year, but in that video he said he would make a Nathaniel Bandy original for that game, and here we are right now, and I'm watching this on my TV. So yeah, forgive me, <laughs> forgive me if I, for not having footage of the video that I'm watching because let's face it it's not quite that important for that to be there. My computer my, com my the cord for my laptop was hanging out of the damn wall and yeah. <laughs> it was almost out of the damn outlet. So yeah, let's let is let's watch this. I said let let's is watch this. <laughs> 17 minutes and 17 seconds. All right, let's turn the shit up. Hey! You see these games? Yeah, I fell asleep looking at them. <laughs> but Nintendo needs is something different to their tried and true form. Yes. Nintendo should strive for originality. <gasps> We're tired of the linear levels with the same bosses, themes, power-ups, and all of that. No. But what can they do? Believe it or not, I think we have a solution. This is Super Mario 63, a popular <laughs> Flash game from the early 2010s. Yes. You can smell the age. Look at that. Oh. oh. So yeah. weird. Nowadays, everything is just flat and boring. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, this game came out in, like, 2007, created by a guy named Runout. And, well, I I'll let, I'll let, I'll let, I'll let him explain. Look that. What, what could they do? Believe it or not, uh, I didn't mean to rewind. I didn't mean to rewind this one. Mario 63, <laughs> a popular flash game from the early 2010s. You can smell the age. Look at that. <laughs> so edgy. Yeah. Nowadays, everything is just flat and boring. Just how we like it. <laughs> but anyway, Mario heads to Peach's castle through the tutorial. You learn how to jump, dive, swim, spin, ground pound, and use flood. Mm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's right. You can find flood pods around the levels mm -hmm. and get to higher places and help with platforming. My question is, why hasn't Nintendo already done this with their 2D Mario game? I know. Anyway, Mario shows up to the castle early, then surprise, surprise, Bowser comes in, he's all like, rrr, 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 and he fires some bullet bills, and wow, the castle has a force field. 
Now that's that. more story depth than any new Super Mario Bros. game combined. Well, duh. And that game, it comes out of nowhere. Put Mario in the street. Now as you get inside the castle, uh -huh. the shoots his magic stick at these shines and they spread all around. Uh, Mario wakes up over time and finds one of those shines Magic Koopa supposedly got rid of. Yeah. So it's time for Peach's Castle. And wow, the main room is basically replicating the original game. Uh -huh. That's pretty neat and all, but it's not all the same since you can't find this sling star just chilling in the corner. Mm. I've always wanted to try one of uh. Oh, not this song. Damn it. This song's gonna make me tear up. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I didn't expect him to do this. So yeah, our first painting brings us to Bob O Battlefield. Okay, um, yeah. For that one, uh, yeah, don't use that song for longer than like five seconds because that is an instant tearjerker for me. <laughs> well, not instant, instant, but if I if I listen to it long enough, then yeah, it will make me cry. And has made me cry, that song has. Yep. After playing for a few minutes, you'll figure out the game isn't linear. Nope. In fact, you can collect shines out of order. Mm -hmm. While this level doesn't look much like the original, no. a lot of the concepts are brought to Mario 63. Yeah. Like, you have to avoid the rolling boulders to fight King Bobble mm -hmm. as an example. Mm -hmm. I love how you just karate chop the bombs, too. <laughs> yeah. It's so goofy. Next is Shifting Sandland. There's elements that are similar to the Mario 64 like level, that. but it feels more like its own thing. Yeah, like that, that, like, that structure, I don't know what you call that, but, you know. The, the black structure at the start of the level. You can go inside this pyramid too, but I would not recommend jumping in the quicksand. I made that shipping sandwich only. I made that mistake when I played this game for the first time in not realizing it was in, in, it was instant death quicksand. Mario 64 level, but it feels more like its own thing. Mm -hmm. You can go inside this pyramid too, but I would not recommend jumping in the quicksand. Shipping Sandlands only has a few shines, actually, so I qualify that as a mini stage. In fact, there's quite a few of those in this game. Oh yeah, there's so many. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, Shipping Sandlands only has like what three shines? It's been a very long time. It, I haven't played this game since 2011. That's the very last time I played this game, by the way. So, <laughs> yeah. Like this one. Tropical Island is a beach with big waves and you collect five silver stars. Yeah. Like Dry World was recreated too, but it's kind of annoying because you don't have a lot of access to flood in this one, forcing you to make tons of precise jumps yeah. right here. Then by look What Dry World, as much as I love the original, it's kind of not fun to play in Mario 63. It's a little... Eh. <laughs> I don't know, maybe if I played it again, I'd feel a little different. But, I mean, I have... In Mario 63... <clears throat> I half liked playing Wet Dry World and half hated it because <laughs> it was such a pain in the ass to try to get through. And uh, which and, well, I'm sure Nathaniel Maney will further um, elaborate on. Speaking up in the ceiling, there's just secret mushroom level. Oh, it's that one. just a random obstacle of course. It's you also got this lava cave level, but it's really confusing to navigate. Oh, like, yeah. get this, okay? You gotta launch yourself towards this random part in the ceiling to find the nozzle, and this is required to get the shine. How is anyone gonna figure that out? That's like if I had to run through a portal to do my laundry. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> While I finish my whites, there's a few more mini levels to cover. Round town is flooring, boom, another cave level. But instead of lava, it's more water and puzzle things. Yeah. It's actually a lot like what Dry World, where you have to keep switching the water level to get to different places. Yeah. It's really fun. As I walk you through this wall, you'll be in this snowy level where you jump across a bunch of clouds and ice blocks. Yep. Then you got this one that's almost impossible to find. It's like, so... seriously, good luck without a guy. It's a little it's easy. It's just a basic cloud stage. Get your red coins and you're done for dinner. And of course, there's a mini castle level too. My favorite this one. This one is themed after the swamps and it's pretty darn easy with the hover. It's my favorite and one. And finally, we've got this oh. galaxy theme level where the... No, this is my favorite one. The Thwomp, Thwomp's Castle is my second favorite. This secret level right here is my favorite. A galaxy of stars. Gravity is turned way down. Does he actually say that in the video? I don't know. I keep talking over him. Yeah. You're done for dinner. And of course, there's a mini castle level too. This one is themed after the swamps, and it's pretty darn easy with the hover nozzle. Yeah. And finally, we've got this galaxy theme level where the gravity is turned way down. You collect five silver stars around this giant rotating platform, and it's quite the joy. It's awesome. Especially when you grab the shine at the point where a platform launches you to the left, and you fly through space and time and miraculously land on this green platform without dying. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. So that's all the me level. Let's jump back to the big boys. Yeah. This is some man. Yeah. Like previously, elements from Mario 64 can be found yep. here. But I had some fun swagging out. Like, check this. <laughs> you can also go into his igloo. And inside is this neat water section where you have to use a combination of the metal and vanish cap to get the shot. Yeah, I like this. That's right. All the caps are in the game, including the flood pack. I'm really not missing the power-ups, honestly. Yeah. Snowman's Land is mostly good, but I haven't brought up this goddamn maze. Oh. You can't really tell where anything is half the time. Eh. You just kind of jump around hoping you don't die. And on top of that, the ground is slippery, making it hard to make progress with the tight spaces. Yeah, that's why I hate the fucking barrel mazes from 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 some of the Mario RPG games. The, the first Mario RPG game and Superstar Saga. I hate those damn barrel mazes. <laughs> Heading back to the courtyard, you'll find the design is completely different from the original yeah. game. Towards the right is a magical nerd Magikoopa, yeah. and it's... he's just kind of chilling out. Wait, you're calling him Magikoopa and not Kamek? Okay. Why is he randomly outside the castle anyway? I don't know. If he wanted to be a good assistant for Bowser, he would have captured and locked him up ages ago. Anyway, this yeah. is just an enemy rush segment. Kill the guys and you win. Oh. So we've covered a lot of normal levels, but what about Bowser ones? Well, the stages are pretty reminiscent of the original. The mm -hmm. background looks similar, and it's linear in design. Expanded. The journey's fun going, but I freaked out when I saw like a billion twops dropping from main time nowhere. And the Bowser fight is actually really solid. Throwing Bowser into it works much better than you'd expect. Yeah. And after that, the real fun begins. You thought one flood nozzle was great. Oh, mama, you just wait. So yeah, after Bowser, you'll unlock the Turbo and Rocket now. Yeah. And better yet, you can interchange them on the fly. Uh -huh. I wonder why Mario Sunshine didn't have the same flood mechanics, because this just makes a lot of sense. Yeah. After that fun, we'll head to Hazy Maze Cave. Yeah. What's funny about this one is it looks practically identical to a cave level from Yoshi's Island. Exactly. Yeah. Without a crying baby Mario. But you'll certainly be crying when you enter the Toxic Maze, oh, because yeah. your health drains fast. Like, look at this! Hold! Oh, Jesus! Uh -huh. Not a big boost hunt, and I gotta say, it's a throbbing banger. It's one of my favorite levels in Mario 63. My ears. Dude, my ears. Oh no. Damn. I gotta turn my shit down. Fuck. <laughs> The rooms and designs really cater to you using all the flood nozzles, uh -huh. helping them feel useful and serve a purpose. And the boss fight with Boo is nothing short of creative. Mm -hmm. There's also this terrifying moment where you're literally eaten by a flood and set aside the pages to get a shine. Yeah. That's why I don't own books! After that jazz, we'll jump into the next Bowser level, and goddamn, it's a lot harder than the first one. I love how this random JPEG image of the sky actually fits perfectly with the stage. Uh huh. When he gets a Bowser, he shows off his orb of power. Oh yeah, the orb of power, I totally forgot about that. Also, the background, it might be from the original. It might be from the original game. I, I always thought it was, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I forgot about this damn orb of power. Ooh, scary! And then you kick his ass. Mm -hmm. So Bowser has this new ability that supposedly makes him stronger, but why not actually use it? After the fight, Bowser goes on this overly dramatic speech about how the world will catch fire, and nobody will survive, and the biggest threat of all, the meteor of ultimate destruction. Ultimate? Ha 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 ha. No, but honestly, I love how the story actually goes in depth. It's making me care a little bit more about defeating Bowser and saving the Mushroom Kingdom. Oh yeah. After the speech, Bowser starts speaking through clouds, I guess, because he demands the whole kingdom to join his side or they'll perish in a few days. Oh yeah. Oh, crap, this is getting deep. Then we find out later, Magic was gonna die with everyone else after all he's done for Bowser. There's even a flashback to Yoshi's Island when he first raises Bowser. Oh, yeah. Like, the writer did some serious research for this game. Yeah. Also, can I just say how funny it is to hear a toad say his family went on vacation to Bowser's castle? Sorry, gotta cancel the video. I got a beach date with Kim Jong-un in North Korea. Ta-ta! Now I want you to think of wild guess where you can find Jolly Roger Bay. Oh, yeah. It's, it's in that random piece of a wall. Yes, yeah, some of the some of the secret entrances to the secret levels are. I mean, some of them are kind of sort of easy to find, and others are just like damn near impossible. Like, let me look at this damn section again. All right, gotta cancel the video. I got a beach date with Kim Jong Un in North Korea. Ta ta. Now I want you to take a wild guess where you can find Jolly Roger Bay. Oh God! Wow. 
Yeah, that was a thing. Maybe there's another way to access this level, but this is how I found it by complete accident. Yeah. But yeah, the level itself doesn't really look like Jolly Roger. No. It's actually pretty similar to Hazy Maze Cave, but with more water. Yeah. This game is filled with secret holes in the walls. Either termites have gone wild, or the castle was created by a sadist. Going through this hole leads you to another room in the castle. Yeah. And check out the stained glass. If it Mario's looking good. Yeah. And downtown, you'll find more levels to tackle. And before moving to that, can we just talk about how great the toads are? Some of them have some interesting dialogue. Yeah. Like, this guy apparently invested some stock, but then the 2008 economic crash happened, and he lost some money, and proceeds to call Bush lousy. Gotta love those outdated quotes from your favorite Mario Flash game. Mm -hmm. Then you got this dude screaming Spider Toad, Spider Toad, and literally defies all physics. I remember that. Some more stages. Next is Tall Tall. Now, I remember that tall. damn, that, that freaking Toad. Dialogue. Like, this guy apparently invested some stock, but then mm. the 2008 economic crash happened, and he lost some money, and proceeds to call Bush lousy. Gotta love those outdated quotes from your favorite Mario Flash game. Also, I don't think, this dude screaming I don't think I've seen those, um, those two, uh, those two pictures of Mario and Luigi in a video before. I don't think I've. I think those are new to me. Screaming Spider Toad, Spider Toad, and literally defies all physics. I totally forgot about that guy, like I said. But on to some more stages. Next. Actually, you know, you, uh, you know, the screen was also like shaking like so damn much when you talked to that toad in the wall. It's this tall, tall mountain. Like Bobo Battlefield. It's, it's so damn subtle, but goddamn, is annoying. It looks a lot like Yoshi's Island, but the environment is much more lush. This mm. level's actually kind of hard too, with some well hidden shines. Oh, like yeah. this one over here. There's a secret cave where you have to use a combination of the vanished and metal cap yeah. to complete it. In the same room as Leave the Lava Land. And I gotta say, it looks pretty dark sweet. I fucking love it. I love it. this giant bully tower in the background. Mm. It really stands out and gives the level a bit of a bone chip. Yeah. Plus there's this shine where you gotta bounce off all these bullet hills to get from place to place. Yeah, this is th this is another one of my favorite <clears throat> Excuse me, this is another one of my favorite secret secret areas in the game. But hands down. It's really satisfying using those dump skulls to your advantage. Mm -hmm. When you go inside the volcano... It has every single, like... It has every single uh, bullet bill color featured in the game in just that one secret area. The water actually evaporates from your flood pack, deeming it useless. This is not only a smart game mechanic, but also pretty scary. You've been using Flood for half the game now. You rely on this guy, and now you can't use it at all. But finally, we've collected enough shines to get to the top level. And you won't be surprised what's up here. Let's get on with good old Rainbow Rock. Yeah. And you know what? It's actually a ton of fun. Yeah. It is pretty damn hard, but by oh. this point of flying, you've mastered the control. It's very the hard. It's mostly fair, so it's really rewarding. Yeah. Now, I'm sure you guys remember the Tricky Triangle oh. start from the original. God. The 63's version actually is tricky. There's practically no safe platform to land on. No. You have to swiftly move and hope you don't trip up and fall all the way down. Mm -hmm. And finally, we have Tip Top Pop. Yeah. And guess what? It's kind of a cakewalk. Because of flood, most of the jumps are easy, despite mm. all the rotating platforms. Now it's time for the final bounce, mm. and I hope you're ready, because it's about to go down. Hey. Literally, I'm tired of standing. Before entering, I was wise enough to grab two nozzles, because you aren't going to find much assistance here. Oh. There's a lot of lava, a lot of bullet fills, and very little forgiveness. Yes, this level is so goddamn long, it took me like a half hour to complete. <laughs> <laughs> it takes you like an hour. It takes like like uh, like forty five minutes to an hour to complete this damn level. It, it, it's one of the longest final levels I've ever seen. Even longer than the final level in uh, yeah, Super Mario Bros. X episode Super Mario Star Expedition by by Chad. Yeah, Nathaniel Mitty, if you're watching this, there's a there's a guy whose username in the Super Mario Bros. X community he's literally just known as Chad. Yeah, uh, his alter username is R is uh, RV Vina. But I'm getting a little bit off topic. The objective is to collect four keys, and all the rooms are like mini levels. Mm -hmm. This first room has a lot of fast moving platforms with little wiggle room. Yeah. The second has a lot of appearing and disappearing platforms, but what's cool is you can use the rocket nozzle to launch yourself all the way to the beginning. The third is very secluded and held underground. You'll have to avoid a bunch of boos, save a toad, and make some difficult jumps. Mm -hmm. And the fourth and final room has a lot of platforms that sink into lava with vanish and metal cap challenges. While doing this, I managed to get the red coin shine too. But that's when I came to a horrible realization. Getting a shot takes you back to Peach's castle. So I gotta do all of that 
again. Oh. Eight years later, I get all the keys again and bake it to the top floor. Forgot about you that. Know, there sure is a lot of buildup. I keep going to different rooms, shooting around with slick stars, yeah. waiting to feel Bowser's blood in my fist. Yeah. It just keeps on going. We gotta use nozzles to get from one platform to the other, mm -hmm. and avoid these walls of paratroopers to run across falling platforms, the bouncing out tiny falling penguins, the more platforms, the wall bumps, the bouncing off the lip bulbs, and this and that, and this and that. Why is this so good? Yeah. After so many rooms of never ending chaos, it happens. You get to the final door. Your heart is pounding because of how much crap you've gone through. Mm -hmm. You're goddamn ready to beat Bowser to a pulp. Yeah. This is your moment. You're gonna make history. You climb those stairs. Heart. This is it. Man. Big ass door. Let's freaking go. Hey. And there he is. Of course, in his cowardly little clown car. Yeah. But something doesn't quite feel right. Bowser launches fireballs your way, but all you really need to do is jump on his head a few times. Big ass door. He even drops all these enemies, letting you slowly refill health. Yeah. All right, I got him. That was not that hard. He ripped off his fucking limbs, dude. <laughs> Holy shit, I didn't, I don't fucking remember that. <laughs> I, I would have said, did you see that? But y'all can't see shit. <laughs> the aud audience, you guys can't see see shit, unfortunately. But well, that's what happens when I, re when I watch a YouTube video on my TV, because I can't really, like, record my TV. I don't have a capture card, but, and also I'm watching this you know, on my PlayStation. <laughs> if you hadn't, uh, but... Yes, when Bowser dies, that his limbs get fucking ripped off, as if Chewbacca got his hands on him. Like, wow, that is that is violent as hell. I don't fucking remember that at all. Probably because it's been so damn long since I played. Because I would have remembered something like this as significant as that. Ah, it was just a robot. So I wasted all that time talking about that violence in a Mario game, fan game or not, only to realize, to only to just now remember it's also a damn robot. So I wasted time talking about that, but still the prospect of that though, it tricked you, like the, it tricks the, it still tricks the, you as the player. So that effect is still there. I knew it. It was obvious because he wasn't using his orb of power. You shoot uh, off that next Slink Star, and now we're in goddamn space. Yes. This is incredible. Why is this the greatest final level I've ever played in my life? Yeah. Meteors and bullet bills all over you. There's all sorts of crap you have to avoid. But your adrenaline is so f***ing high that you don't care. You manage to bypass it all. You finish the level. It what? is on like Donkey Kong. And it happens again. Oh. Oh my god. The actual final fight. Look at that Bowser's thing. Bowser's got his orbit power, but it's no match for us. We grab him by the tail and <coughs> chuck this monster into some spikes. How about a bing and about a boom? Wow. It's upside down. That's right, Bowser. You fall to your death. I remember that. I saved the princess once again. That's what I'm talking about. Nope. It's not over yet. So the orbit power is still set to wreak havoc, but Magikoop comes out of nowhere and says he can reverse the impact and cause it to only happen inside Bowser's castle. Problem number one. We're still in the castle! <laughs> Magikoopa tries to save me and Peach, but of course I fall and have to run out of there myself. Mm. That's right, we're playing Metroid. It's just like shit, I gotta haul or I'm gonna die. At this point, you're so stressed out that you don't care if you're getting hit by ground. You're just trying to plow through, jumping from one crush building to the next. You don't even know what time it is or what's even going on. This is so... God damn intense, like seriously, this fucking sex segment. Die. At this point, you're so stressed out that you don't care if you're getting hit by ground. You're just trying to plow through, jumping from one crush building to the next. You don't even know what time it is or what's even going on. You keep on going, and then you do make it out. And then you get to see Bowser's castle get completely obliterated by his own orb of power. Game over for Bowser. We win. And that, my friends, is Super Mario 63. Well, except for one level that I saved to leave. Oh, yeah. Spoiler alert, you can actually unlock Luigi. Yeah. When I first played this, I accidentally did this exploit where you could reach the top of the tower before defeating Bowser, and I found the final level. It's called the perfect... <coughs> uh, excuse me. The Edge of the Mushroom Kingdom uh -huh. in Man. This level can suck my nuts. It may have been because I was playing as Luigi and I hate his physics, but a lot of this level design is straight up cryptic. Like, look at this. I need to get this rocket nozzle, but the vanish star is all the way to the right with no nothing but breakable blocks and a few tiny platforms to stand on. It is so infuriating. I, uh, I hated this fucking level. And the last time I did play this in 2011, I raged.
<laughs> Let me tell you, I raged like a motherfucker trying to get through this goddamn level. And it's so... <sighs> This is definitely one of the hardest final levels that I've played. The hardest secret final levels. It's just, it's... At this level, it, it's called, uh... The, it's, yeah, it's called the Edge of the Mushroom Kingdom. And this would give eight levels, like, the perfect run to Ch Champions Road and even Darker Side, all of them a run for their fucking money, so... Yeah, let, let NB explain the horrors of this level, and then I'll talk about it after he talks about this. And there's enemies that get in your way to make it even worse. Like, God, after eventually making it across, you'll use rocket shots to land on a lot of really tiny clouds. Then you have to make this godforsaken jump that's 20 light years away using a very specific rocket dive. <laughs> and missing the dive means you go all the way back to the beginning. Finally, you'll get access to the hover nozzle, but it almost doesn't matter because there's a stupid amount of enemies on the screen and there's just so much to avoid. I was able to beat this level, but it was such a chore. And honestly, that was the only level I didn't enjoy. The rest of the game is... Fantastic. I know. Like, I was not expecting that from a flash game. But yes, I loved I, Sumar 6 Street. Mwah. Yeah, I'll get my final thoughts because this video is almost over. It's like two minutes. But hey, anything can happen, right? Hey! <coughs> Andy Jacob! Why does this always happen? What? The unexpected? Hey! No! Whenever I talk about a game, people just show up without knocking. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anything about that, but look what I found. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, fuck! So, oh, no, Jake. Well, it's a small meteor, but still. Give me that stupid orb. <laughs> nah. Will you please just leave? Sure. I just need one thing from you. And what's that? Can you buy me a cake? What? Huh? Please buy me a cake. I don't. I don't have any money, and it was my birthday yesterday. Oh. Not even Facebook remembered. Oh. Uh. Sorry, but I, I don't know you. Buy me a cake. No! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the day stretch. Oh, what the fuck? Galaxy 2. Uh, oh shit, this, this, good god. This is my favorite fight scene on the, on the, on the channel. One of them, one of my favorite fight scenes in, the, in, in his videos. But that was a remix. So what are you gonna do with that damn orb? Yeah, you, you gotta destroy it somehow. So now what? Jacob, he disappeared. Oh boy. Okay, that's obviously set up for whatever the next NB original is gonna be. Yes. Um. So yeah, uh. Like I said, Super Mario 63 was one of my fa <laughs> favorite Mario Flash games of all time. It still is. I gotta replay that shit again. And if I do replay it, I will do a Let's Play of it. And, uh, yeah. M for the most part, it was an awesome game. Parts of, there were parts of some levels were very kind of annoying and, and kind of stupidly challenging at times, but while being fair at the same time, it had fair... It had, it had, it had pain the ass yet fair challenges, except for one fucking level. The, uh, like, like Nathan said, the, the final level, the edge of the Mushroom Kingdom. That level can suck my fucking dick. But <laughs> I'm not allowed to say. YouTube doesn't let you like you saying that stuff on camera anymore. They just don't. They don't. Demonetize. But yeah, um, I don't really know what else to say. But um, this video was. It was great. Uh, I've been dying for Nathaniel Made to talk about Sumar 63 for a very long time. For <laughs> and I think even as far back as 2016. Like, holy hell. It's probably been that long. But uh, the next game I would love to see him uh, 
Uh, Nathaniel Bandy, if you're watching this, the next game I would like to see you talk about or, or, or delve into is uh, Super Mario Bros. X because, yeah, that is... It, it's a Flash game that, that has, has garnered so many different types of uh, uh, episodes within, within the game. Because it's not even a game so much as it is an engine, Super Mario Bros. X. And people make their own uh, games within the game known as episodes for Super Mario Bros. X. And I've played tons of those. And Nathaniel Bainey, I, 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 I keep saying your full name. But Nathan, I would love to see you delve into that game and talk about that next. Um, <clears throat> great, great video as always. And I, I, lo I, loved, I loved your take on the game. I loved, I loved finally seeing you talk about this game. And <clears throat> the skits within the video were awesome and, and were unexpected. And uh, I never really know what to expect in terms of, of the skits within the, the videos. And I can't wait for the next NB original, whatever it's going to be. Because, it, yeah, like I said, the ending is obviously set up for the next one, whatever it's going to be. And uh, I, I keep repeating my own damn words. But I predict there's going to be like one, at least one or two more NB originals for the rest of the year. Because it seems like a... The last Emmy original was only like two months ago, so, uh, yeah. I'm sorry this video was overly long, but if this was just a reaction video, it would be boring as hell, like I keep, like I kept saying. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Uh, all in all, uh, uh, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but, uh, if you like this video, then don't forget to subscribe, and I, if... I basically have a variety channel where I do vlogs, I do gaming videos every so often, I do taste test videos, and uh, I even do Loud House episode reviews, so yeah. And um, this was uh, one of my favorite NBA originals in a long time because I'm super biased for Super Mario 63. I love that game, super nostalgic, I really need to play that game. It's on my damn computer! <laughs> it's on my damn computer audience, by the way. I just need to play the damn shit on camera for you guys. And uh, one thing Nathan forgot to talk about was the level editor. He didn't talk about that at all. Hmm. Oh well. Um, that's another thing Super Mario Bros. X is known for its level ed for its level editors. And the episodes are and Super Mario Bros. X as a game engine is based primarily around that because, for example, Super Mario 63 has its level editor doesn't have every single feature that the main game has. Like, for for a random example, there's a, there are uh, multiple colors of Goombas within the main game of Super Mario 63, but you don't see those multiple colors in the level editor. Yeah. But everything made in Super Mario Bros. X, those were, you, you can't, you can make yourself and were made in an actual level editor. <coughs> Excuse me, but... This video's gone way too long. <laughs> uh, uh, keep, keep up the good work, Nathaniel Bandy. You do a hell of a good job, and I still get inspired. And I still get inspired by your videos to this day. And I've been fan. I've been a fan since since uh, Super Mar Super Mario Maker first came out. And uh, yeah, keep up the good work, man. You do a you do a hell of a job. And uh, uh, I'd love to work with you someday. Just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs>